of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Very happy Easter as we begin our Mass of Easter Day. The greeting, peace be with you, is the greeting that Christ gave to his disciples when he appeared to them the evening of that Easter Day and found them still locked in the upper room, frightened and worried. He brings that same peace to us as we begin our celebration today, wherever we happen to be. If there's anxiety in our hearts, if there's worry in our hearts, the Lord says, peace be with you. He gives the peace that this world cannot give, a peace that's deep, deep down in our hearts. And so as we begin to celebrate this Mass, we call to mind our sins and ask for mercy and for pardon. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you guide us by your truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to share your life with us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, ha. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed Cornelius and his household. You must have heard about the recent happenings in Judea, about Jesus of Nazareth and how he began in Galilee after John had been preaching baptism. 
God had anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. And because God was with him, Jesus went about doing good and curing all who had fallen into the power of the devil. Now I and those with me can witness to everything he did throughout the countryside of Judea and in Jerusalem itself, and also to the fact that they killed him by hanging him on a tree. Yet, three days afterwards, God raised him to life and allowed him to be seen, not by the whole people, but only by certain witnesses God had chosen beforehand. Now we are those witnesses. We have eaten and drunk with him after his resurrection from the dead, and he has ordered us to proclaim this to his people and to tell them that God has appointed him to judge everyone, alive or dead. It is to him that all the prophets bear this witness that all who believe in Jesus will have their sins forgiven through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord's right hand has triumphed. His right hand raised me up. I shall not die. I shall live and recount his deeds. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. Alleluia. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven, where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand. Let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have is hidden with Christ in God. But when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Christ has become our Paschal sacrifice. Let us feast with joy in the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath and towards dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre. And all at once there was a violent earthquake. For the angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. His face was like lightning, 
his robe white as snow. The guards were so sh shaken, so frightened of him, that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need for you to be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said he would. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead, and now he is going before you to Galilee. It is there you will see him. Now I have told you. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And they were coming to meet, and, and there coming to meet them was Jesus. Greetings, he said, and the women came up to him, and falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was very early on the first day of the week, and still dark, when Mary of Magdala and the other Mary came to visit the sepulchre. Don't they say that the darkest hour is just before dawn? When we're troubled or sick, when something weighs heavily on our minds, or we feel fearful, and as a result we can't sleep. Doesn't the night seem so long, so dark? It feels as though it's never going to end. It is even worse when we can't see a way out of our trouble or our sickness when we can't see a solution to whatever is weighing us down or making us fearful. The darkness can feel like a physical barrier, like a proverbial brick wall. I don't know about you, but it's felt a little bit like that these last few weeks with the threat, with the threat of COVID-19 hanging over each one of us. It's dark, the night is long, and the dawn seems a long way off. That's how it must have felt for Mary of Magdala and the other Mary as they went off to the tomb to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus. They'd seen him crucified just a couple of days before. They'd witnessed him being put in the tomb, dead, finished, everything ended. They were wondering how they might remove the stone from the grave. And all at once there was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. His face was like lightning, his robe white as snow. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need to be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? The earthquake woke the women from their mournful uh, reverie. They had prepared the body of Jesus for burial, wrapping it in binding clothes. Now they seemed to be bound themselves by the trappings of death. But suddenly they were shaken by this mighty quake and the angel of the Lord, like lightning, rolled back the stone from the tomb and destroyed the gloomy shroud of darkness that surrounded them. The women, from being plunged into the depth of dark despair, were amazed, awestruck. No need to be afraid, says the angel. You were looking for Jesus who was crucified. Then comes the perplexing question. Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He has risen and now is going before you to Galilee. It is there that you will see him just as he told you. Don't hang around the tomb of death. 
It's the tomb that's dead, finished, ended, not Jesus. He is not here. He's risen. And he's going before you into Galilee, the place where you spend your everyday life. Yes, Christ accompanies us in the ordinary events of life. Or in the case of the present moment, in the very strange and disturbing events of life, radically altered by COVID-19. He is with us where we live and work, where we struggle and love, where we find hope and strength to survive and even thrive as we live out that resurrection life. A blessed and peaceful Easter to each and every one of you, and especially to those who are on their own or feeling especially isolated and lonely at this moment. May God bless you all and bring you his peace. Because Easter is the the time of baptism and last night at the vigil we should have baptized the the catechumens who've been preparing um, we also are going to renew our baptismal promises at this mass and the simple answer to the questions that i'm going to ask you is i do so dear brothers and sisters through the paschal mystery we have been buried with christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life and so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I, I do. do. And all his works? I, I do. do. And all his empty show? I, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I, I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. On this Easter day, with confidence, we offer our prayers to the merciful Father. For the Pope and the bishops, we pray that their leadership may continue to inspire the spread of the gospel to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we pray for an end of conflict and a growth in mutual respect between people of every creed and nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a renewal of the church, we pray for a conversion of hearts and minds, so that we may live our Christian lives with greater integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our catechumens and those who were to be received into full communion with the church this Easter, we pray that they may persevere on their journey, supported by the prayers of all the faithful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For ourselves and our world, under the threat of the coronavirus pandemic, we pray that the almighty and merciful Lord look with compassion on our afflictions and so lighten our burden and confirm our faith that we may always trust without hesitation in his providential love. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. For the deceased and for those who mourn, we pray that those who have died may share in the glory of Christ's resurrection from the dead and that those who grieve may be consoled by the hope of Easter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to hear our prayers, those spoken and those unspoken, which we make with confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Father, we stood as we open this wine. We come to sing of the goodness of Christ. We come to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord but on this day above all to lord you yet more gloriously when christ our passover has been sacrificed for he is the true lamb who takes away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life therefore Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 
in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, paying and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. <clears throat> Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the pre this precious chalice in his holy and memorable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us. This pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace.
Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, the John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. <coughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. May I receive him, my body, my Lord Jesus Christ, not only for judgment and condemnation, but through loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body, and a healing remedy. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ at the sacred and eternal life. Amen. We'll make our spiritual communion. My Lord Jesus Christ, who for the love which you bear for us and remain night and day in the Blessed Sacrament, full of compassion and of love, awaiting, calling and welcoming all who come to visit you, I believe that you are present in the Sacrament of the Altar. I adore you from the abyss of my nothingness and I thank you for all the graces which you have bestowed upon me, and in particular for having given me yourself in this sacrament, for having given me your most holy mother, Mary, for my advocate, and for having called me to visit you in my mind, present in my parish church. I now salute your most loving heart, and this for three ends. 
and thanksgiving for this great gift to make amends to you for all the outrages which you receive in the sacrament from all your enemies. I intend by asking you to come into my heart also to adore you in all the places on earth where you are least revered and loved and the most abandoned. My Jesus, I love you with my whole heart. I grieve for having hitherto so many times offended your infinite goodness. I purpose by your grace never more to offend you for the time to come. And now miserable and unworthy though I be, I consecrate myself to you without reserve. I give you and renounce my entire will, my affections, my desires, and all that I possess. From henceforth, dispose of me and all that I have as you please. All that I ask of you and desire is your holy love, final perseverance, and the perfect accomplishment of your will. I recommend to you the souls in purgatory, but especially those who have had the greatest devotion to the most blessed sacrament and to the most blessed Virgin Mary. I also recommend to you all poor sinners and those who are suffering from illness and disease and are fearful. Finally, my dear Saviour, I unite all my affections with the affections of your most loving heart, and I offer them thus united to our eternal Father and beseech him in your name, in love of you, to accept and grant them. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to possess you within my soul. Since I am unable now to receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and fervour, so that, renewed by the paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, a very, very peaceful and blessed Easter to every one of you, especially those, as I say, who who feel on the, very much on their own and isolated and feel lonely, you're very much in our thoughts and all our prayers today. May the peace of Christ be deep in your hearts. The Lord be with you. With Bow down for the blessing. May God, or may Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast 
come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ, Alleluia, Alleluia. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou, O death, hast won. Angels in bright raiment rolled the stone away, kept the folded grave cloths where thy body lay. Thine be the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou, O death, hast won. Lo, Jesus meets us, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets us, scatters fear and gloom. Let his church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For the Lord now lives.